Well, the initial idea I had to be able to record at Abbey Road is the fact that, one, I've always been a massive Beatles fan. Now, everyone knows the Beatles recorded all their biggest albums at Abbey Road, as well as other bands like The Who and Pink Floyd. Um, the second reason is because they have a world-famous piano there um, that has a very unique tone. So because a lot of my music focuses on the piano, I thought it would be a very good choice to be able to play my songs on that particular piano. Yeah, because so much was raised in such a short amount of time it left, I decided it would be good to try for the orchestra. Now, it was, it was a long shot because hiring an orchestra, especially in Abbey Road, is not going to be cheap and I realised that. Um, but as soon as I started putting forward the idea to everyone, because I've already got myself quite a following of people listening to my orchestral stuff and I've built up a reputation for that, I think the idea behind my stuff getting played by a real orchestra really appealed to a lot of people. When the orchestra was setting up, getting ready to play my song, um, initially I was terrified because even though I've been in touch with Ken, the conductor, who checked all the sheet music and made sure it was okay, uh, I was still very worried that maybe something would be off, maybe the violins would be playing in the wrong key, they'd be playing the wrong notes, the horn would be coming in when it's not supposed to. So all these things were going through my mind um, as to you know what it would sound like. And by the time they got into the, uh, the refrain where all the strings came in, it had actually gone from fear to just downright joy. I think um, the people that I chose to come with me to the studio, um, whether they be a, a musician or a photographer, um, they're dear friends, they've supported me a lot, um, not just through my music, but as being friends there for me to actually help me coordinate it and help the funding process be a success. I think one particular person that this really worked for was a, a guitarist um, who came down with me from Scotland, uh, his name is Neil. We've played in bands together for years. Uh, and he's always been uh, a Beatles fan as well, and it's been his dream to go to Abbey Road. Um, I know a number of guitarists, but this person kind of really stood out to me because we've been through a lot together in bands, and I wanted to give him that opportunity to actually come down and experience what it would be like. At first, when Fox asked me to join him at Abbey Road, I wasn't quite sure if he was being serious or not. Um, I'm a very, very modest musician. Um, I don't really rate myself that highly. I'm quite unusual for a lead guitar player, where most lead guitar players kind of tend to have doors need to be widened to get their egos through them. Um, 
I would like to think that I'm fairly humble, uh, and I know that um, other guys at Fox has played with. He's played with some absolutely phenom phenomenal guitar players. Um, so incredibly honoured that he asked me to do it. Lilypad is again someone I've known online who I've actually worked with for a long time. Um, Lilypad was a wee bit different because she's never been to a studio before in her life, let alone Abbey Road. She was terrified and you could definitely say we were tossing her into the deep end there, like very deep. You wouldn't be able to see the bottom, just how much pressure like, that must have been on her. And when she came to the studio, she was really terrified. But um, because everyone there is so professional and so friendly, um, after we got onto the second song, she did not want to leave that mic. Um, when Fox and Moore asked me to be here at Abbey Road with him, um, at first I couldn't believe he was asking me. Um, and m my first reaction was that maybe I, it was too big a project for me, but I really wanted to give it a go because I really want to support him and everyone else. I think for me, I'm very private about how I record, so I'm so used to being on my own. Um, so this has been completely different for me for that reason because I've got lots of people directing me rather than relying on myself. Well for the singers uh, that I invited over from the United States, Colson, Amadia, it was easy for me to actually bring them over and because like a lot of the album had so much planning, um, there were a couple of songs that were going to be going right to the wire so I needed to be able to, to work with someone that I've done so in the past and I know I can rely on and I know that they can work together with me in such short notice. And that actually goes the same with uh, Alexander James Adams as well. Staring to a dark sky and holding all my oxygen. I'm finally getting by. It's a sentimental statement, pretending that we can take flight. With a pull of gravity Hell-bent on keeping us alive And keeping me awake at night I'm tired but you're on my, on my mind It's pretty hard to put into words what it's like being at Abbey Road. Um, obviously there's a lot of history. Um, when you come in, there's people outside, um, you know, the halls. Um, basically, you know, on the street waiting to, you know, catch a glimpse of something going on inside. Um, there's so much uh, writing on the walls, literally outside, um, that just uh, walking through the front door, you're like, what am I doing? What am I doing coming in here? I can't believe I can, uh, I can come in here. Um, it feels pretty surreal um, to even be allowed through the front door. So it's, it's pretty hard to put into words, but uh, I guess if you had to put it succinctly, it would just be uh, unbelievable. It's absolutely amazing being here at Abbey Road Studios. It's the kind of place that you've heard about growing up all your life and to really be here, it's just like you have to pinch yourself to make sure you're not sleeping. <laughs> Having people who really know what they're doing, running the soundboard, making sure that all the microphones are hung, um, it's, that's pretty impressive. Plus the kinds of microphones that they have. Uh, I just happened to notice when you're in studio too, they've got a U47 Neumann, which is a tube microphone that I believe runs, what, five, six, seven thousand dollars? The caliber of the sound reproduction is just, it's out of this world.
shade of the trees all is protected under the arms of a friend we survive come fly with me through the arms of the forest come touch the sky where the Fox and Moore and I were uh, sitting at Rainfirst at the dealer's table, and he mentioned off casually that, uh, yeah, he had an album he wanted to record, and, and that he might want a fiddle track or two. And I said, well, you know, if you want to give me a, 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 a copy of what you've got, I'll take it into my studio, I'll record in my studio, and I'll send it back to you. He goes, well, I was thinking I could fly you out, you know, to London to, to be in the studio there. And I'm like, it's a long ways to go, Fox. And he goes, no, no, you want to come. I'm like, why? And he goes, well, it's Abbey, Stud Abbey Road Studio. I'm like, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me pencil you in. I'm sure I can find a place. So I, I went, I was just buggy. I couldn't believe it. And I, I went home to my brother, who was my engineer, and I said I was in Abbey Road studio, and, and, and he, 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 he shifted off his Buddhist path to be slightly jealous for just a moment before he congratulated me. <laughs> Working with professionals like Simon, who has worked in Hollywood, who's scored for Avatar, Skyfall, the Beijing Olympics. Um, naturally, when I first went into the studio uh, with him, I was really nervous. Um, I'd never worked with someone of that caliber before in my life. So when he was working with the orchestra, showing me all the sheet music, you know, um, I was always watching him learning and seeing just how he worked. This guy was actually able to hear a sheet getting turned by the conductor when no one else did. And he made everything go from the top again. This is how good and how professional um, this person is when it comes to working there in that situation. Now, on the second day after the, the orchestra had recorded, I could relax a bit more because for the whole experience, the orchestra was the one thing I was worried about most because of all the work that was involved in it. And I actually found myself, uh, when we were in Studio 2, uh, recording all the guitars, all the, uh, the vocalists, uh, who all did a fantastic job, that not only was um, I able to uh, put my own input in, I was actually able to form a professional bond with him and actually brainstorm with him at the same time. And, you know, he would listen to my input, I would listen to his, and by the, by the end of the day, we were both using our strengths to put a lot of positive energy and effort into the album to make it that extra special at the end of the day. Songs that I chose, um, I've thought long and hard about what songs I would use and these songs just kept on sticking out to me. I am here, uh, dreaming of you. These are ones that I feel I was most proud of. Um, even uh, Come Find Me, this was a song that I never officially released and only a few friends had actually heard it. Um, and this, this was a song that I was really proud of as well. Um, and maybe it was fate, the fact that I didn't release it, that all of a sudden I could maybe name it after the album and be the title track on it. Dreaming, uh, dreaming of you, um, I'm here. I've always felt um, when I do these songs, even years ago, I still listen to them today. And I felt that those ones would be the perfect chance to be able to hear just what it would be like if it was done by a real orchestra. And I'm very pleased with the, uh, the songs that I chose.
in the fandom itself, um, because I've built up such a, a following with the, the orchestral music that I've done, um, to be able to go to Abbey Road um, would not have been possible without their backing at all. Uh, there's no way I would have been here otherwise, because it's safe to say that the majority of the people that did actually um, donate to that was in the furry fandom. So, absolutely, um, without their help, there's no way I could have been here, and I just hope that um, I will be able to give them something back in return with uh, the amount of work that's been put onto it and being able to record at the most amazing studio in the world. And to everyone in the fandom that donated and supported me, thank you very much. I'm very proud to know that the furry fandom has made all of this possible. I hope that this shows other people that we were forced to be reckoned with so long as we take ourselves seriously and respectfully. Without the furry fandom, I, I, I would not have been able to do half of what I do. And so for them to be able to support Fox and me to be able to do this, it, it is truly honoring and humbling and daunting. Uh, my dad was also a major part of getting everything produced and organised for the whole Abbey Road experience and the album itself. Um, he helped me coordinate with the orchestra, with the conductor. He handled a lot of um, emails from differing parties about the, the contracts or the copyright concerns or the photography licences that I was allowed to do there as well. Um, I can only imagine how full his, his inbox must have been um, because of the stuff that I was organising for Abbey Road. Um, and even when he was there, he was he was like a rock, he was still organising everything for me, he was helping me get drinks, he was giving some really good input, he was keeping me sane basically throughout the whole experience. Uh, we find out that Fox was very gifted and had this musical gift very early on. Um, when he was about six months old, his first instrument, which a lot of people don't know, was the drums. So we were highly delighted after a few weeks when he smashed them to bits and we never replaced them. So, um, but very early on he would go up to his grandmother's piano, play along and uh, start making tunes straight away from two, three years old and it developed from there. So it was good to nurture. I think possibly Fox's music will change only because he'll want to, it will inspire him to keep reaching for his dreams um, and it shows that anything's possible, you know, if you want it enough and for myself, it, I just want to go home now and start recording my own stuff, um, which I haven't been doing recently so that's hopefully going to kickstart me into doing that more. Yes, I do believe Fox's music will change because of what he's experienced here. I fully feel that his music is going to continue to evolve to incorporate not only what he's learned from having to orchestrate. I think I, I think Foxy's music will change after after being here. Um, I think after hearing his his, his own compositions be played by an orchestra, I think it's, it's going to expand. Well, whether this will change his music or his future um, depends on Fox. And, and knowing Fox, he takes things in his stride. He doesn't change and I hope he maintains that. I think it will give him more confidence. Uh, it may frustrate him though more now that he's been here, recorded Abbey Road with top musicians, English Chamber Orchestra. Um, I'm just concerned something may feel bland after that, but I don't think it will change him at all. I think he will want more and help inspire him. A lot of people have asked me, you know, where do you go from there? You know, you've been to the best studio in the world you've worked with the best people. Well, the answer to that is basically, yeah, you can still do better because when I was there, I found out that I was learning so many things. You know, it's just because you go to the best location doesn't mean you still can't learn. Now, 
I've already come up with so many ideas that I want to do and I want to go back there to do my next album. I've made so many contacts, there's so many things that I want to be able to do. I want to be able to learn to actually conduct the orchestra next time I'm there. So even though I've already been to the best place in the world, I want to go to the best place in the world and make it even better for me.